Hereditary spherocytosis is a non-immune mediated hemolytic anemia characterized by the production of red blood cells that are sphere-shaped rather than the normal biconcave disc-shaped RBCs. This difference in shape makes the red blood cells more prone to rupture. The disorder is inherited in an autosomal dominant manner and exhibits incomplete penetrance in its expression. On a blood smear, howl jolly bodies may be seen within red blood cells. Signs and symptoms include anemia, yellow discoloration of the skin and eyes, and an enlarged spleen. Signs and symptoms, as in non-hereditary spherocytosis, the spleen destroys the spherocytes. This process of red blood cells rupturing directly results in varying degrees of anemia, high levels of bilirubin in the blood, and splenomegaly. Acute cases can threaten to cause hypoxia through anemia and acute connectors through high blood levels of bilirubin, particularly in newborns. Most cases can be detected soon after birth. An adult with this disease should have their children tested, although the presence of the disease in children is usually noticed soon after birth. Occasionally, the disease will go unnoticed until the child is about four or five years of age. A person may also be a carrier of the disease and show no signs or symptoms of the disease. Other symptoms may include abdominal pain that could lead to the removal of the spleen and or gallbladder. Chronic symptoms include anemia, increased blood viscosity, and splenomegaly. Furthermore, the detritus of the broken down blood cells a euro unconjugated or indirect bilirubin, accumulates in the gallbladder, and can cause pigmented gallstones or sludge to develop. In chronic patients, an infection or other illness can cause an increase in the destruction of red blood cells, resulting in the appearance of acute symptoms, a hemolytic crisis. Spherocytosis patients who are heterozygous for a hemochromatosis gene may suffer from iron overload despite the hemochromatosis genes being recessive. Diagnosis In a peripheral blood smear, the red blood cells will appear abnormally small and lack the central pale area that is present in normal red blood cells. These changes are also seen in non-hereditary spherocytosis, but they are typically more pronounced in hereditary spherocytosis. The number of immature red blood cells will be elevated. An increase in the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is also consistent with hereditary spherocytosis. Other protein deficiencies cause hereditary elliptocytosis, pyropoechylocytosis or stomatocytosis. In long-standing cases and in patients who have taken iron supplementation or received numerous blood transfusions, iron overload may be a significant problem. This is a potential cause of heart muscle damage and liver disease. Measuring iron stores is therefore considered part of the diagnostic approach to hereditary spherocytosis. An osmotic fragility test can aid in the diagnosis. In this test, the spherocytes will rupture in liquid solutions less concentrated than the inside of the red blood cell. This is due to increased permeability of the spherocyte membrane to salt and water, which enters the concentrated inner environment of the RBC and leads to its rupture. Although the osmotic fragility test is widely considered the gold standard for diagnosing hereditary spherocytosis, it misses as many as 25% of cases. Flow cytometric analysis of eosin 5 a euro squared milliamide labeled intact red blood cells and the acidified glycerol lysis test are two additional options to aid diagnosis. Pathophysiology, hereditary spherocytosis is an autosomal dominant or recessive trait, most commonly found in northern European and Japanese families although an estimated 25% of cases are due to spontaneous mutations. A patient has a 50% chance of passing the mutation on to each of his her offspring. Hereditary spherocytosis is caused by a variety of molecular defects in the genes that code for the red blood cell proteins spectrin, enkirin, band 3 protein, protein 4.2, and other red blood cell membrane proteins. These proteins are necessary to maintain the normal shape of a red blood cell, which is a biconcave disc. The integrating protein that is most commonly defective is enkirin which is responsible for incorporation and binding of spectrin, thus in its dysfunction cytoskeletal instabilities ensue. The primary defect in hereditary spherocytosis is a deficiency of membrane surface area. 
decreased surface area may be produced by two different mechanisms, one, defects of spectrin, enkirin, or protein 4.2 led to reduced density of the membrane skeleton, destabilizing the overlying lipid bile and releasing band 3 containing microvesicles. Two, defects of band 3 led to band 3 deficiency and loss of its lipid stabilizing effect. This results in the loss of band 3 free microvesicles. Both pathways result in membrane loss, decreased surface area, and formation of spherocytes with decreased deformability. As the spleen normally targets abnormally shaped red cells, it also destroys spherocytes. In the spleen, the passage from the cords of bilirath into the sinusoids may be seen as a bottleneck, where red blood cells need to be flexible in order to pass through. In hereditary spherocytosis, red blood cells fail to pass through and get phagocytosed, causing extravascular hemolyses. Complications, hemolytic crisis, with more pronounced jaundice due to accelerated hemolyses. A plastic crisis with dramatic fall in hemoglobin level and decompensation, usually due to maturation arrest and often associated with megaloblastic changes. May be precipitated by infection, such as influenza notably with parvovirus B19. Folate deficiency caused by increased bone marrow requirement. Pigmented gallstones occur in approximately half of untreated patients. Increased hemolysis of red blood cells leads to increased bilirubin levels, because bilirubin is a breakdown product of heme. The high levels of bilirubin must be excreted into the bile by the liver, which may cause the formation of a pigmented gallstone which is composed of calcium bilirubinate. Since these stones contain high levels of calcium carbonates and phosphate, they are radiopic and are visible on X-ray. Leg ulcer. Abnormally low hemoglobin A1c levels. Hemoglobin A1c is a test for determining the average blood glucose levels over an extended period of time, and is often used to evaluate glucose control in diabetics. The hemoglobin A1c levels are abnormally low because the lifespan of the red blood cells is decreased, providing less time for the non-enzymatic glycosylation of hemoglobin. Thus, even with high overall blood sugar, the A1c will be lower than expected. Treatment At this point, there exists no cure for the genetic defect that causes hereditary spherocytosis. Current management focuses on interventions that limit the severity of the disease. Treatment options include, splenectomy as in non-hereditary spherocytosis, acute symptoms of anemia and hyperbilirubinemia indicate treatment with blood transfusions or exchanges and chronic symptoms of anemia and splenomegaly indicate dietary supplementation of folic acid and splenectomy, the surgical removal of the spleen. Splenectomy is indicated for moderate to severe cases, but not mild cases. To decrease the risk of sepsis, post-splenectomy spherocytosis patients require immunization against the pneumococcus bacterium, influenza virus, and prophylactic antibiotic treatment. However, the use of prophylactic antibiotics, such as penicillin, remains controversial. Partial splenectomy, since the spleen is important for protecting against encapsulated organisms, Sepsis caused by encapsulated organisms is a possible complication of splenectomy. The option of partial splenectomy may be considered in the interest of preserving immune function. Research on outcomes is currently limited, but favorable. Cholecystectomy may be necessary. Epidemiology Hereditary spherocytosis is the most common disorder of the red cell membrane and affects 1 in 2,000 people of northern European ancestry. According to Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, the frequency is at least 1 in 5,000. Research, experimental gene therapy exists to treat hereditary spherocytosis in lab mice. However, this treatment has not yet been tried on humans due to all of the risks involved in human gene therapy. See also, spherocytosis, anemia, hematology, references. External links an online HS resource from the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center, a short article from WebMD, a picture of spherocytes from Medline.